Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus today. I am Trace. This is episode three of five on paranormal. So far, we've talked about what the paranormal even is and where it came from. We've talked about the research into paranormal. There is a lot, by the way. Thank you guys for your comments yesterday. And there's even stuff that science can explain and can't explain. We're going to talk about the first one today, and of course, later on this week, we're going to talk about why you should even care. Like, what's the point of being skeptical of this stuff anyway? So, we already know that a phenomenon cannot be confirmed as paranormal all the time. The scientific method has gaps in it. You know, you take your problem, you hypothesize, and then you test out your hypothesis, and you form a conclusion based on that, and then you form another hypothesis, and you test it again. And sometimes, the paranormal just doesn't fit into that system. It doesn't fit that definition. But if you step back and you talk about specific instances that seem paranormal, there are times that you can explain that they're really, really not. Let's start with ghosts and why your house probably isn't haunted. I mean, just from a logical perspective, first of all, America's only had houses in the way that we think of them now for a few hundred years. Europe has had houses like this for thousands of years, and, you know, in parts of Africa and Asia, they've been populated for so long that every house would have to be haunted. Think about it. But anyway, Richard Wiseman, a former magician and now psychologist at the University of Hertfordshire, wrote a book on ghosts called Paranormality. He stresses that it could be as simple as the power of suggestion and fear. It's like the placebo effect. When we're afraid, we respond physically, not just mentally, right? Blood flows from our fingertips into the major muscles of our body to prepare us for the fight or flight response. And this can make you feel cold, which is something people commonly say when they're experiencing a ghost, right? They're afraid, and so they feel cold. It also makes you hypervigilant, so you're ready in case something happens. And that makes you notice things like voices or footsteps or things that you may not have noticed before, before you were being hypervigilant. Some people believe that they encounter ghosts as they're falling asleep or waking up, but that strange space between those two things, while not completely understood, there are just some things that do add up in a scientific way. For example, a lot of people who believe they're experiencing some kind of paranormal activity, ghost activity, felt like they're being held down in bed. Skeptics and researchers believe that might just be sleep paralysis, which is, uh, explains a lot of the evil presences in fiction. It's a temporary moment, either right before or right after sleep, when your brain hasn't turned off the hormones that paralyze you so that you don't act out your dreams. And nobody can really prove why or why this doesn't happen or how this happens to some people and not others, but from a psychophysiological standpoint, studies suggest that this is part of the experience that people claim to have. And it can come from stress or jet lag or caffeine or alcohol or even reaching REM sleep more quickly. Maybe you had sleep deprivation earlier in the week because you were stressed out or drunk or something like that. Either way, probably not ghosts. Another thing that might seem like there's a ghost present, makes you feel like there's a presence in the room, can be simply electromagnetic fields. There are studies done with transcranial magnetic stimulation that when you stimulate a certain part of your brain, you feel like there's a presence in the room with you. And this can happen in the lab, but it might be able to happen in nature too. Basically, a direct or alternating current that you come in contact with in nature might be able to cause this too. The Earth's iron core is rotating, creating a magnetic field around our whole planet that protects us from all sorts of energetic particles in space, but it's also here around us all the time. And all of that motion of the electrical current flying through our planet and through the atmosphere can be created artificially as well through electric power currents and appliances and computers. They've even shown that other types of electromagnetic radiation or just waves in general, like sound waves, can make you feel certain things. We talked about that over in the movie series, so make sure you check that out. There's a ton of evidence linking mood shifts, sleep disturbances, and anxiety to magnetic fields altering our brain activity and hormone levels. It may even cause some skin cells to release inflammatory substances and cause itching or other skin sensations. And all of this is just from electromagnetic activity in the atmosphere around you. A few studies looked into claims of haunted areas, and some of them have found that the structure itself or the location of that structure may have exposed the occupants of the structure to a stronger magnetic field. 
you know, focusing it in certain ways. For example, a building made of stone and mesh wiring, you know, like a plaster, they used to put up chicken wire in there. And that could have caused an EM flux throughout the house, just because there was maybe a natural high EM flux in that area anyway. These things can also occur near fault zones, which have higher EM radiations as well. It even could just be that the house contains a lot of electronics and appliances in just the right places. Who knows? But come on, not 100% ghosts. We're not saying it's not ghosts. We're just saying it's probably not ghosts. And if you're one of those people who are obsessed with ghost hunter type shows, you're probably familiar with them taking a flashlight and setting it out to have the ghost have a medium to communicate with you, right? Usually it's a yes or no question and the mysterious presence is turning the flashlight on and off. That mysterious presence is just physics, you guys. That's just simple physics. When you heat up something by running electric current through it, it expands and then it contracts again and then it expands again. You're unscrewing it in such a way that the contacts are just barely touching each other and when it heats up and cools off, it's gonna turn on and off in an imperceptible way to humans, but you know, we get the light and people think it's ghosts, but they're wrong. If you wanna know some specifics, a guy named Burkhard Reich does a great job at explaining this. You can get a link to his info in the description. Another scientific thing that people think might be contributing to our experiences with ghosts is specifically a mold called ergot. Ergot is a fungus that grows on rye, which is, you know, wheat-like cereal grain, it's delicious when made into alcohol. It's possibly hallucinogenic, uh, and it's actually a source of lysergic acid, which is the thing that LSD is made of. Ergot is a natural substance, just grows on this grain. So mold could cause hallucinogenic effects, potentially. Now, there are other molds that might have similar effects that could just grow in your home, and they could give off some kind of airborne system that causes you to maybe think that there are ghosts around. Dr. Shane Rogers, an associate professor of civil and environmental engineering, told Julia on D News that, quote, reported mental and physical health symptoms and experiences of those exposed to poor air quality, including molds and experiences, including physical and mental reportings in hauntings are strikingly similar. Essentially is what he's saying is people who experience hauntings are saying, these three things, you know, I saw, I felt some presence and I felt like there was somebody holding me down or something. And then people who are exposed to this mold is also saying those same things. Dr. Rogers actually mentioned a case where a mass murderer claimed that God had told him to do it. When they investigated his home, they found high levels of lysergic acid in the mold inside of the home. So there may be a precedent. But enough about ghosts. I think we've done enough there. Let's mess up yourself on psychics. Nobody's gonna read your mind. Nobody. Not only does the author from earlier, Richard Weissman, not like ghosts, he apparently doesn't like psychics either, because he joined the James Randi Educational Foundation, which has a standing offer of $1 million to any person who can prove that they are a medium or a psychic. They designed an initial test to disprove it, the psychic was told to conduct and write down 10 different readings on strangers. The strangers were wearing a graduation gown and a mask. They couldn't have direct interaction with the psychic, which shouldn't really matter if you're psychic, right? After the readings, the strangers were asked to identify which one was theirs and not a single one was identified correctly. The psychics kept getting tested and kept getting tested. And I think I probably, you know, don't have to tell you, no one has taken this million dollars yet. We can keep testing psychics and we'd probably keep getting similar results because psychic abilities don't necessarily have anything to do with paranormality. What makes psychics so believable is that we want to believe in them and they're really good at manipulation and being vague. If you put yourself in a position where it was your choice to go see a psychic and you wanted an answer of some kind and you were looking for it and you paid money for the reading, that transaction and that feeling really reinforces in your mind this kind of placebo effect. One of the first things that a psychic will probably do is talk about a certain individual that you know and they might even ask questions to probe what direction they should go for you. But they're gonna be vague in all of this because they might list a series of common names, for example, like Joe or Nick or Adam or Robert or Sarah or something. You know, they're, they're trying to just grasp at straws to see what you do. They might even go even more vague and just say someone who you met recently, someone with 
the letter J in their name. And then they'll wait for you to say, oh my gosh, my ex-girlfriend Jill did this thing lately and it was crazy. And they're like, yes, Jill, that's who it is. And you're trying to draw those connections for the psychic to make the psychic's job easier. So what it really comes back to is they're talking to you without you necessarily knowing that all they're doing is reading you. They're just literally reading your body language. So we've talked about ghosts and how that's probably electromagnetic fields. We've talked about it maybe being mold. We've talked about all these different things that could even be just your natural fear processes. We've also talked about how psychics feed on our gullibility and interest in getting an answer out of that psychic and they're very good at reading body language. But as long as we're you know debunking things, the dude who invented Bigfoot invented it and admitted it on his deathbed and crop circles are all fake and you're welcome for that. But there are things that science can't prove. You know, just because we can debunk some of these things doesn't mean we can debunk all of them. And that's where a lot of scientists kind of get into this strange middle ground. There are scientists who believe in the paranormal and they do follow this stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow, so make sure you come back for that. Let us know down in the comments if you have any paranormal stuff that you believe in that even though science has debunked it, you still continue to believe in it. Please don't say the moon landing. We went to the moon, you guys. <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more D News Plus. Come find me on Twitter if you want to talk about it. I used to live in a haunted house. It was creepy. There was a little boy with a red ball who lived in my hallway. It was freaky. Thanks for tuning in to D News Plus, everyone. We'll see you next time.